Hello and welcome to another in a series we have uh, put together featuring diverse founders in STEM um, here in Minnesota. I'm Nina Axelson. I'm the founder of Grid Catalyst. We're a clean energy and climate tech accelerator that supports entrepreneurs, innovators, and startups uh, working to come into this industry. Um, we are really excited to be able to showcase some of Minnesota's best and brightest and offer a little bit of insight into uh, what it takes to be successful and the hurdles and high moments of, of the entrepreneur journey. Uh, in particular, we've been wanting to increase uh, representation and consideration of entrepreneurship for women uh, in STEM. So having Della with us today is really exciting um, as someone who is uh, running a really successful business here. Now I'll have her uh, introduce herself and tell us a little bit about Young Consulting. Good Sorry, afternoon. Young Environmental. I should get it right out of the gate. <laughs> <laughs> good afternoon, good morning, whatever time it is, given that entrepreneurs almost never know what time it is because whatever time it is, is, is busy time, right? <laughs> so I am Della Shaw Young. I am the owner of Young Environmental Consulting Group. Uh, we are a water and natural resources um, planning, compliance, um, and analysis um, organization. So for um, infrastructure projects, anything that disturbs soil, our job is to make sure that, um, you know, when it rains or snows and that water comes in contact with the sediment, it does not um, transport dirties to um, lakes, rivers, and streams that we recreate in, get our food from, and other things like that. We have been in business since 2016, so we're in our seventh year, um, and um, there are about 11 of us right now, um, and we are in that right sweet spot to grow. So that's us, and that's me. Fantastic. Uh, the hydrology classes I took in college were some of the hardest and most interesting <laughs> I, I took. So I'm always excited to talk to someone with that um, background and expertise. So let's kind of start at the beginning. What was your inspiration or the catalyst to starting your own business? Um, you know, my family has always been entrepreneurial uh, and with all of the practices, I led um, water and natural resources practice groups for um, large consulting companies. So during those, I really honed my skills um, but I think I have always had this internal drive to own my own business. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. Um, I remember coming out of school and um, my boyfriend at the time, now husband, um, I was telling him that I wanted to you know, own a, like a janitorial business. And he's like, yeah, about that. <laughs> so I put that idea to bed, but I realized quickly that I could um, lead, you know, I could be a business owner within a business if I treated it that way, right? So for those um, consulting firms that I worked for, I was managing businesses. So when um, my last ascent at um, this firm was coming to a close and I had um, hired on at another firm, signed the paperwork. Um, I was talking to my husband and my father and they were, you know, like, maybe it's the time. You've done all this work. You've done all this background. Maybe you should think about it. So <clears throat> of course I was nervous and, you know, the response was always, what's the worst that can happen? Somebody else hires you. So that's how it started. We, we kicked it off. Well, I say we, I kicked it off and, um, you know, the rest is history. I had a lot of really early successes and it's all about, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about the way you treat people. So with the clients that I've had, um, most of them are friends. So um, when I was looking to make the transition because I took care of them so well, um, our current and our first client, our biggest client, um, was like, wherever Della's going, that's where we're going to go. 
because <laughs> they knew they would be taken care of. So um, finding a first client wasn't daunting, but um, that process was interesting. So I guess my inspiration catalyst was the right time. <laughs> and I think I was in this interesting space of transition where I think I had turned it was a few years earlier, I had turned 40. And I think when you're in these different, you know, changes in time, you know, um, you start looking at life a little differently, right? So instead of getting the, um, the motorcycle or the, um, you know, the uh, um, Bentley or whatever, I decided to start a business. Hmm. I don't know why I did that, but yeah. So that's really it in a nutshell. <laughs> that's fantastic. It's, it's interesting um, because in these conversations I've, I've had um, with entrepreneurs who have technical background, science background, I, I meet a lot who don't think of themselves as an entrepreneur or they don't identify as a founder. It's like, it's something they do, but it's not a hat they wear. But when I hear you talk about it, it sounds like it's like part of your DNA, that 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 entrepreneurial mindset. Is that fair? Would you say that? I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that's fair. You know, did it take a while for me to come into my own? Yeah, because I think, I think historically, when you look at entrepreneurs or you look at um, entrepreneurship, a lot of times we're looking at selling a product, mm -hmm. right? We make a widget, we sell the widget, right? Or if it's something else, if it's about service, it's almost about backbreaking service. Like I am moving a rock from here to there. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, um, entrepreneurs don't think about the mental capital they have to be able to serve others in that space, right? So, you know, when I came out of college, it was very difficult for me to even think about the fact that, you know, the knowledge, skills, and abilities that I had acquired in school and that I would nurture would be something that I could sell um, or to offer to clients that they would need that and they could be, you know, they could, they would value that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always, although I say I've always been entrepreneurial, I mean, my dad was an electrical engineer. So it's really easy to, you know, set up the electrical, you know, foundation for a house, do electrical stuff. My mom was a seamstress and tailor. So she was sewing. So there were products, there were tangible things coming out of that. So for me, it was like, well, that's what I'm going to do. That was the cleaning business. I could, come, you could come and you could see the, the place clean. But I never thought about it in terms of, hey, I could help somebody think differently about how they um, manage their water resources. I could help them plan. I could help them design and construct something. You know, it was a, yeah, it was different. So entrepreneurial, yes. Um, you know, the services or, or products I was looking to think that what I thought people would want to buy has definitely changed over time with confidence and um, just a recognition of value. Yeah, that is, I think that's going to be such an important point for folks tuning into this of, because I, I think that misnomer about, I have to invent something, build it and put it on the market. So it's so quick for folks to say, well, I'm, I don't do that versus that mental capital that you said. Right. I think that's, that's really, that's really insightful. Um, so what has been some of the unexpected parts of the journey for you, which sometimes I feel like everybody, you could say everything, right? There's so many parts of it that um, can be unexpected, but what is, what stands out for you? I think, you know, um, wow. There are a few, um, and I, I think one of the, the most unexpected, you know, recognizing that I was prepared for this um, has been success, right? So um, if you're like, if any one of you are like me, who is thinking about every pit, puddle, every landmine, everything that could potentially go wrong and planning for it, that was me when I started this company, right? 
what are the things that would go wrong? How do we make sure we have plan A, plan B, plan C for that? And figuring out how to navigate that, right? But the thing I never truly prepare for and have been struggling through that is how do you then plan for success, right? So if you've spent all this time preparing for this, you should also prepare for the potential rewards that come along with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll be honest, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared for this, the, you know, the initial scale that was required um, to think about adding on new staff. Cause you know, for a while I'm like, yeah, hey, I'm starting this thing. And I have this vision about being women focused, you know, because a lot of times we don't have voices and all of that, but I'm like, I'm going to be poor for like five years. So <laughs> I've got time to, you know, pretty much um, nurture that. But then, you know, year middle of year one, and I'm like, uh, yeah, people are hearing about me and I'm not out there pushing. And now I need to figure out, you know, what do I want to do? Do I want this thing to be a Della firm and only Della, a single person organization, or do I want it to be more? And I've always wanted it to be more. So yeah, it took a lot, of, you know, out of me to be able to recognize that success and then figure out how to move. And I'm still navigating that. So, yeah. Are there resources you turn to when you're navigating that? Is that like your trusted advisors, your family, your, you know, 20 books in the library? What, what's your go-to? So um, definitely not books. <laughs> I should I feel that. qualify that because you know a lot of times it's like I don't know there's just something about a book that's like oh my god I've got to read that but um no um it's been a combination of things so um one has been um my husband um who is a really good sounding board so we've got obviously different strengths I am very emotional I am, I understand my business, but I, I think a lot on the people side uh, and I'm emotional. Um, and sometimes it's all about the facts, right? So we, um, we coordinate on that front in terms of thinking about the financials and the operations of the business, right? Um, then when I'm thinking about, um, you know, sometimes just, just comprehensive strategies, I've got a group of women that I go to and we just talk about anything and everything. We talk about everything from thinking about 401ks to um, benefit programs, or you know, are you paying your staff well? What are the PTO policies and things like that? And then I have um, two gentlemen who have been in my life for a long time. So one guy was a mentor that I had um, I remember coming back to work after I'd had my first child. And I felt like the world was coming to an end because they almost forgot about me. Like I just disappeared, right? And then I came back and I'm like, what am I going to be working on and all of this? And in consulting, you got to be careful in terms of what you're working on. And I got this first project and I went and I was doing a client interview and um, or a client process and I needed to present. And this guy was in the audience and he was um, like an assistant director of a public agency. He met me outside. I was leaving. He's like, hey, so I know this client. These are the things you should think about and call me if you ever want to chat. And so guess what? I did. <laughs> and he and I have been um, he's been a mentor of sorts for the last probably 10, 15 years. And then he actually came and worked for me for a while. And now he's fully retired. And we try to connect quarterly just because he has a feel of the industry and all that. Then the first consulting firm I worked for, there was a senior VP there. Um, he retired and he has consistently met with me and we talk about things. We really get into the weeds of making sure everybody on your team knows their contributions to the success and the, you know, the impacts they may have on you that, that would, you know, cause negative, you know, that would be negative. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's really it in a nutshell. I mean, I surround myself with, I try to surround myself with people who are, who challenge me, right. Um, force me to think a little bit outside of the box, but 
they also understand my core values. So they don't push on those, but it's more of how do we help you realize the things that you've been talking about, you know, so. Yeah, excellent. It is, it's, you know, because we often talk about in entrepreneurship, how much pressure and how much we're carrying as individuals. And we do, right? We are, we have to be self-motivated. We have to drive, but we don't have to do it alone. So I I really appreciate that you've got those folks in your corner and the sounding boards because it's it's a lot of work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And you don't want to be in your own head. That's not, that can be a scary place. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. You don't, you don't want to come in here. No, no. (laughs) Um, so is there, are are there any specific hurdles? Um, you know, we, we probably all have a list of a hundred, but, but anything that really, um, stands out to you as, um, this is something I really had to overcome for the business to be successful or in my entrepreneurship journey. So it's something I think you and I were chatting a little bit about before we turn on the recording. It's really fear of failure. Um, we have this unrealistic um, <clears throat> expectation of being perfect, that we won't make mistakes and things of that nature. And don't get me wrong, I beat myself up when I make a mistake, but I also recognize that I learn the most from my mistakes. So how do I you know, turn that around and make sure that you know, this failure becomes, um, my partner, my buddy, you know, whatever, so that we're not in this thing where I become paralyzed because I can't move because of a fear that it might not work out, right? So I think that was the hardest one for me. Um, You know, I am the oldest child. Um, I have African roots. So there are a lot of things on my shoulders that are important about a firstborn who, you know, you're not supposed to embarrass the family, you're supposed to be this. And, you know, and with all of those things, you have this um, weight that you carry around. Well, I've got to be perfect. I've got to be perfect. And with that, I just, you know, it took a while to get over it and I'm still working through it. But the one thing that is important, and I talked to my team about it, is that if we make a mistake, let's learn from it. It's not going to be this punitive thing. Now, if it's like an obvious thing, uh, okay, come on now, right? But if it's just something that we had the right thoughts, we were we came at it in the right way and something bad happened, let's figure out how do we hone that and make sure we use that as an example for others so that they know, hey, we make mistakes. We're not perfect. Um, and that's one thing I talk to my interns about. You know, when they come on, they think they need to know everything. I'm like, yeah, I know. We'll train you um, and you will make mistakes. So I think that was the biggest thing. I wish I would have learned that lesson a lot earlier on in life because it would have helped me be more proactive, be more active and proactive and take risks more than I, than I did. Yeah. It feels, that feels like a lesson that you just learn over and over and you, you know, it's not like you come back to the same spot every time, right. You're making right. that continuum. And I right. often find that I can offer that wisdom to somebody else and not internalize it to myself, myself as much right. as I right. <laughs> right. It's like, Oh, you'll be okay. You know, it's like, and you know, it's the mother in a lot of us, right. Oh, you're <laughs> fine. You're great. And then you're, you know, when you get in your own head, I can't believe you made that mistake. It was so <laughs> obvious. Right. And then, you know, when you go through it, you're talking to yourself, you're, you know, the self-talk is not, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, I feel that in my bones. Yeah. Well, so on the other side of that, right, is the things we feel proud about and the success. Are there a few things that really just um, kind of made you beam with pride a few moments for the business uh, that, that really stand out for you? Wow. Um, yeah, there are a few of them. I think when we got, um, we completed our first um, internship class. So I had had interns for a while, but then um, we got really intentional around setting up a program for interns. So um, in 2018, 2019, we designed a process where I would bring interns on in January, or I would 
evaluate them, you know, sign agreements with them, recognize that they would be coming in May. And then between January and May, we would design a program for them for either if it was with erosion or geomorphology or anything around water, right? We would design it for them, bring them in, train them in on what they needed to know, um, and then let them loose. And then at the end of the summer, they had to write a report and they had to go through the painful process of me reviewing it and giving them feedback. Um, because I think a lot of times our young people are, the writing is um, something we struggle with, um, with being able to um, just help people replicate whatever we did, right? That's just not something we do a lot of anymore. So reminding them about the scientific method and then after the report, they had to present to the client. So it wasn't like, you know, they just did this thing and it went into a box. It was a usable document that would then be implemented, um, you know, for future, you know, strategy as a part of future strategy. So um, our first one in 2019 was just amazing. Um, our young people, I mean, I think one guy, he is, we're still in touch. He came the following summer and he's working on his PhD now. And I got a text from him yesterday because he wanted me to do something for him. But it's been a really amazing experience because they recognize that we value them, that they're just not folks that are gonna be doing filing and miscellaneous tasks. They are contributors to this thing. So um, yeah, that's that one brings me joy. Um, I think the last one, um, the most recent one was I have been and I have been apprehensive of stepping into my role as chief executive officer of this company. Um, it has been an internal battle for years because it's like, well, that's who you are, but I don't know if I'm, I'm quite there yet. Well, you're doing everything, but I don't know if I'm there yet. <laughs> but um, January, I stepped into it. And what it did for me was it helped me let the world know that this is what I'm doing and this is who I am. But also it allows me to delegate more because then I don't feel like I have to do everything. I've built a good team around me that need to be um, empowered more and need to be on their own. So that's been amazing. <laughs> I didn't think a simple change would do that, but it has been, oh, yeah, it's been great. It's been three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been an amazing three weeks. It's been, oh, I, I can't tell you how, I, and it's funny because then the world opens in a different way. Some of the mm -hmm. people that you have talked to forever see you differently, and I don't even know why. To me, it's like, I'm the same person I always was but mm -hmm. they're seeing you differently. You're presenting differently um, and you're allowing people to do things and you don't have to be the one with all the answers anymore because you have this team yeah. that you trust. So yeah, those are a couple that come to mind. Well, those aren't small. <laughs> no, those are, that's incredible. I, um, you know, obviously applaud all the work on that future generation, right? That's, that's feeding into greatness, but the stepping into your own greatness too, right? Like that's, that's important because it's not, it is for you, but it's also for what you're trying to accomplish. Right. And it sometimes, it seems like it shouldn't be so hard to step into it, but <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. Because you're trying to be humble. Right right? You're trying to be humble, but you also have this vision of what that role is. And a lot of times because of your own biases or, or baggage, you don't see yourself in that. Yeah. So you feel like there's all this stuff that you have to do in order to step into that, right? So, yeah. you know, and finally, I think I proved myself to myself. I got out of my head. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to that. I got to prove myself to myself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm the toughest audience I've got. <laughs> That's great. Well, last question. Um, what advice do you have for other women who might be considering 
entrepreneurship and, and taking on the kind of journey that you've had? Um, yeah, I don't want to sound like the Nike commercial, but uh, I think I'm going to do that. Just do it. You know, you are probably harder on yourself than anybody else is. If you're thinking about it you've you've probably been thinking about it for longer than you're giving yourself credit for you've probably spent a lot of time trying to hone the things that you want to um, be known for you've probably spent a good amount of effort and energy around just making this thing successful the hard thing now is just to pull the trigger right mm -hmm. just do it you know what's the worst that can happen you fail and then you learn from it yeah I mean, that's, that's the thing, because I think, you know, as I look back now, I think I would be, I would struggle if I would not have taken this on, because um, it is something I truly had to do, and I was okay being unsuccessful at it. Um, so if this is something you want, try it. Mm -hmm. And you'll be surprised by the people who uh, will be in your corner sharing you on some of the rooms that you're not a part of that people have um, will be recommending you for, you know, for the services you, you provide. So, you know, um, yeah, trust your, trust your gut and just go for it. Um, that's what I would say. That is fantastic advice. I think getting past that idea of um, either accepting that failure isn't failure or redefining it because I, that's for me to start this program, you know, I left a really great job, but I knew there was this thing I had, I had to do, I wanted to do. And I, you know, sat down with my husband and I said, I'm going to try it for two years. And if at the end of the two years, I haven't, you know, it's really not working, then, then I'll pivot. Right. But I knew that even if the business didn't go beyond that two years, what I would learn and the, yep. the, you know, the conversations I'd be in, the opportunities would just change the everything. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's I just, you give, I'm sitting here listening and, and absorbing all that. It's, it just really resonates. That's great. So, well, Della, I, I deeply appreciate being in conversation with you. I feel like this is a video I'm going to come back and watch several times <laughs> myself and get myself Della wisdom on the regular. <laughs> um, is there anything else you'd like to share before we, we sign off here? I think um, the only thing I would like to share is that, you know, um, speak your vision, speak whatever you're trying to do and talk to as many people as you trust, you know, in that trusted circle, you know why you have the people in your circle that you talk, you trust. Mm -hmm. So tell them about, tell them about what you're trying to do and they will encourage you in ways that you would not, may not expect. And they might have others for you to talk to, to help you realize your vision. So, you know, again, I think this thing that we've been talking about, you know, being in your head is a very real thing but you have to take it out of here, speak it, and then um, allow the people that are around you that are, have been placed here for a reason. And they have a purpose. And some of that might just be to help you along that you did not know about, but you're holding on to this thing, let it out. <laughs> yeah. And let the um, bright spots in your life help you through and help you realize um, your vision and your dream. Wow. What a great place to end. Della, you are such an inspiration and just incredible. I hope folks uh, go check you out and youngecg.com because not only can you learn from Della, you can work with Della and I can imagine it would be just as amazing to work with you as to chat with you. So thank you for your time today. Thank That's, you. Uh, just been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. And you have a good rest of the day. Thanks. Bye.